Questions review. My name is Stuart Lockhead. My co, my guests today are Norrie Stewart, Phil Attridge, and Alex Grant. And I have to say, right from the start, that I think this I haven't enjoyed watching First Minister's Questions more ever. It was absolutely amazing today. So uh, if you missed it, catch the recording. Let's start with Alex. We we weren't here last week, so let's see. What did you think? Roll call. Uh, yeah, well, I think given the opposition had uh, quite a lot of uh, things to have a go at, and much better than um, corruption in Glasgow land sales that was the, the last week, they had, they had the Alex Bell article in the Guardian and the IFS report this morning, which uh, which they thought they could use to serious effect to undermine the uh, SFP government's position, and I think uh, Salmond was well briefed right across the piece on all of those issues and basically that came back at them. The Royal Mail was the other issue. Um, well, they thought they could undermine him by all of them asking him, would you renationalize it? And he said yes. Um, so I think his, his replies today were as good as I've ever seen. In fact, I think it's probably the best, the best First Minister's um, set of responses I've seen since we started doing this. No? I um, can't disagree with it. Had them on toast, every single one. Mm. Um, he was a master. Uh, he, he, he left it long enough for them to dig the hole, and he just shoveled the dirt on top of them. Uh, totally <coughs> did them in. Joanne, again, reading a script. Uh, I'd hate to see her have to run away from a train without a piece of paper telling her how to do it. Because <laughs> she's garbage. And she was garbage today. She came out with a list of people. She, it was all um, based on the Alex Bell Guardian article. Um, but Alex Bell saved the day for Salmon by going on the news night yeah, last night. Yeah, did. And his very last words were, we're better friends now than we ever were. Um, so he had that. I mean, it looked like a setup to me, to be yeah. quite frank. Yeah. It really did. It looked like, right, let's give him something to talk about. But she was left nameless. She was crap. Crap. Cool. Yeah, well, I think it was a setup. It worked perfectly. Um, and I did like as well that only 16, well, well the figures, uh, and did you throw figures about, that the 16% um, of the electorate out there trust her as a leader. Yeah. And 44% of Labour voters do, do not, not trust, trust her. her. But then, yeah, and it's like, if you said, no, you're trying to cross a railway track or something. There's no spontaneity. There's, there's, there's not an original thought in her head. Um, it's almost like she's a cipher for somebody else. And I would like to know who that cipher is. Is it, is it, is it Anas Sawa writing her scripts? Who is it writing her scripts? Uh, it's obviously because she just, it doesn't matter. Well, it's people like what he says. writing her script. I mean, she's got advisors doing it. The, the simple question is, right, yesterday I spent probably 10 hours glued to the television and radio with the various debates and discussions and panels that were on. No word from her. No. She never does appear unless Why it's some issue, she? women's well, issue or something. She's on, she, they can't, look, they, she got elected by the same methodology it would appear that, uh, that Millibank got elected because of the way the Electoral College works and the unions thought she was a better representative. I have to say, I don't know why they thought that, but they obviously did based on her pitch to them. But they obviously have come to a conclusion, well, she is the leader, but we can't let her in front of a camera, but she has to think on her feet, so we keep her away from it. We, we send Anna Sawar in, who basically is an attack dog, um, <coughs> or anybody else who might front up his bound to be. I mean, they even, they even sent Ian Gray in, for God's sake, last week to, to defend the bedroom tax bit. Now, that, that was scary, because Ian Gray looked like he was in a different league to her. Well, it looked to me as though he was himself. And well, my memory of Ian Gray was that he was a complete charisma bypass. Oh yeah, the yeah, but, but, but he, he's in effect, he, he's efficient. But when he said about script putting um, Anna Sawa as an attack dog, when he was on that debate with um, Sturgeon, mm -hmm. he was reading from the script as well. Um, in, in a sense that whatever, when she was asking him questions, 
and he so, he so was just reading out down. he was just reading down out all these things oh so you'll be oh so you'll be so you haven't and he's sitting and he's reading off as well um i mean i find it appalling it's it's so unprofessional it's trashy if they can't do it i mean it shouldn't even be msps let alone bloody leaders or, or, or deputy leaders, if they can't think for themselves. Imagine if they were actually leading an independent Scotland, either of them, and something happened, you know, like um, well, they got attacked by the Northumbrians let, or something. Let's, oh. be, let's be certain about this, uh, Phil. These people, assuming we are fort fortunate enough to get a yes vote, will never, ever lead an independent Scotland. So you don't need to worry about it. It won't happen, ever. Can I ask... Um, never say never. Uh, like, what, touch all right, this is <laughs> Shiver looking for a spine to... Aye. Yeah, that's, that's Stone. Up. That was a famous George Galloway. And, 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 uh, and Simon used that right at the yeah. start of... It was sometime around the start of, of the war uh, in Iraq when he described looking at the Labour backbenchers as they sat there like fodder and he says, I was watching this dose of... Calcium running around the Labour back benches looking for a spine to run. Well, Alex, it, Alex Salmond responded, his first response to John Lamont's shiver um, looking for a spine. Yeah, yeah looking for like, his first um, comments were the Newsnight programme, uh, how he talked to Paul, and uh, the Labour Party had no spine. I mean, he was right in there, that was, right, that was planned. Yeah, well, there's, there's no doubt, Stuart, there's absolutely no doubt based on what he did today that they've sat down and said, we really must work hard at undermining this position where they try to pretend they're against something when the, when the Labour Party will not mm. actually tell England they're against it and they get away with it because of the media. So he's, go he's got to now, and anybody who appears in the box has got to actually say, as I was saying earlier, he's accused them of lying because they're dissembling at the absolute best and he's got to be able to say, have you got a spine? Because you keep saying you're against something. Oh, if it were, of course I don't like that. Oh, I, I, if, it were, if it were down to me, but it isn't down to them. And they, and well, there you go. I think the, they get, the, perfect, away with it. the perfect example was right towards the end on the question of Royal Mail. Yeah. They thought they thought he would be equivocate on the Royal yeah. Mail, but no, he did, obviously they discussed it. And yeah. if you're asked about it, what will you say? And he said, well, I'll just say we'll renationalise. Yeah. No. And, no. No. We'll no, take them back into public ownership. No. Right. Watch that. Okay. Because because it's it's but, and they're they're not going to say that. The think of the impact that's, that's going to have on potential ownership. investors. And yeah. See? Well, that was, as soon as I heard him Powerful say that, argument. I, my first thought was he's got word back after his letter to David Cameron, and David Cameron's either said, you're not getting an answer, yeah. or hmm. fuck you. And there's no, 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 to make it. That, that announcement suddenly to make it difficult for them to sell exactly. Exactly. and he, he could i mean that there, there, there'd be way to undermine any company or any group or whatever that would take over the whole of royal mail um they would then be a sovereign nation up here with a sovereign parliament they can set up their own they can undermine it they can do all sorts of things because the, the agreement would be with the previous government they can literally take it back into ownership yep sorry we're not giving you any money for that we're well, taking it back. But well, you know the danger of that. No, 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 market no, 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 nobody, nobody's going to do that. No, that's Can not, you imagine the than public anything. support? Mm -hmm. Yeah. If they were to turn around to do that. But there was also a few other things. It was that bit with, well, you know, that Mandelson and Darling, so they're only half the Tories. Tories. Oh, that was a lovely which, line. No, he had, he had quite a lot, a, a lot, a lot of good bits in there. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. then also when he quoted the um, previous Labour and Tory governments with the Scottish. Fishing industry, you know, uh, brought up by yeah, the, uh, that, our French MSP. Which that, be, uh, he's government one about the Scottish fishermen being expendable. I've never heard that one. No, yeah, well, he, well I, I think you'll get more when you now start. Don't you believe yeah. me? Yeah, well, they've got. Don't you believe me? What about? That's another one of these documents that has boom come out of the blue. No, no, there's plenty. What do you mean? No, I believe you. Well, I've been telling you how long that yes, I've got ammunition sent. Oh, yeah, oh, and it's see, like, uh, but it was okay. even, it's even oh, you're right. a better presentation of stuff that's already in, in, in the domain. It's like, j j just, it's, it's all perception, it's the way you do it, it's a sound bite and it gets, and the no campaigns, bedtimes. I mean, sorry, that's brilliant. Yeah, that's a, that's a well, good that no was an excellent line. Bed tax. It's the I no mean, campaign, yeah. no campaign's bedroom tax. I thought, well, that was, that was good. cunning as well. No, it is good because if you watched Alistair Darling yesterday when he was being interviewed about someone trying to get Cameron to speak to him, Alistair Darling was 
was his feet underwater were going a hundred miles an hour trying to distance himself yeah. from from the Tory party they have a real problem with that and and saying the no campaigns bedroom tax is a perfect way of exemplifying yeah. it yeah, yeah but I was I, I thought that was whew. very sharp and whatever they've done they're all in bed together all previous governments because Tory governments come in and they're always Tory governments and they always set about dismantling and destroying things. Where Labour come in and go, we're sensible, we're sensible, we'll just have to carry on like the Tories for a while. And then, well, the last one we had anyway was the most right-wing government with the exception of Maggie Thatcher since the on Second a, World War. On a bit of minutiae, why can they only give 20 billion? What legal imperative... Um, Obstacle is there to give them the uh, total of thirty five point three billion or something like that. I wrote down. I, I, my understanding of that is that I don't understand the exact detail, and it is a bit of dissembling to be frank. This, this, they are saying that they are legally constrained in the specific uh, alleviation they can give directly uh, as regards the, the bedroom tax. But as a number of other people have pointed out, the late, even the Labour Party, who again are completely disingenuous on this you can you can walk around the corner and say here's five bob for something totally different i have identified you as a person who's been asked for 15 quid a week i can only give you seven pound 50 via the 20 million but i could give you seven pound 50 in another form of uh, uh credit one way or another so there's all sorts of things they could do but they've as they've admitted what they what they said nicholas sturzen said it i think um or george Swinney did uh we're not going to stand here and basically take the hit for the Westminster policy mm. by actually spending money that we've got to take for somebody else. We're going to keep attacking them on it. Yeah, it'd yeah. be interesting. Yeah. It was interesting nobody mentioned the Barnett consequentials of uh, Nick Clegg's statement about feeding... 60 million. Uh, 60 million. What are you going to do with that? Right, can, can, somebody can, 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 can somebody clarify this question? Geraint Thomas, is he the First Minister of Wales by any chance? No, he was... He, 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 no, he, he was the leader of Plaid Cymru. Was he not the leader of Plaid Cymru at some point? Mm. No? Well, in what context? I can't remember. Okay, so if you can put that in context. It's something to do with the privatisation of Royal Mail. And um, I, not I noticed that um, the F Labour First Minister of Wales has been saying some very complimentary things, uh, or let let's put it say, some things that totally conflict with uh, Scottish Labour about further devolution and all the rest of it. Yeah, yeah. well, it's relatively easy for him to do that though, because their devolution um, model is way behind the Scottish devolution yeah. model. I, if he's, he may be, but you see, you could argue that was consistent because he's pushing, they're way behind Scotland, so he's pushing for more. The Labour Party continue to say, as they're all going to continue to try to say, we will give you, vote no and we'll give you more. Well, we all know you know, that it's a lie, um, because there's no way any of them can guarantee giving it to you, because there's no way anyone can guarantee they're going to be a power well, can, I ask, can I ask each one of us, you here then, I mean, we've obviously had a very interesting and different personal questions. Are we seeing a complete change? In what? Basically saying, you're lying, you're lying, you're lying. Uh, bringing... I'd wait to the next one and the one after, because, you know, because yeah, the week before last, I mean, Simon was like, wasn't there. Uh, um, you know, I would like to see a bit of consistency right. in this. The other thing, but, what about you, Norrie, do you mean, can you see this? Is this a sea change or is it just a one-off? I hope it's a sea change. No, I, 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 just, I didn't see the previous ones. In the, I, didn't, I watched bits, but I didn't see the detail you did. But I, I, my impression from his approach today is that the, that the SNP have decided they've got to go on the offensive mm. to undermine Labour, who the media allowed to dissemble that they would do this when we know the Labour Party are never going it's to not do just, it. It's not just Labour. Bear in mind that just how powerful the pro-Tory voice is coming over the border. Because, I mean, you see, I mean, I they, think... They don't say they're going to cut anything. But you know no. what I mean? The point is, you sit there watching the news, and it comes from London, and it's all about policies and, and things that I, just don't affect them. Yeah, but what, you've, and I agree, but to, to, to some extent... That's but to some extent, the Tories get a voice in Scotland that they don't deserve. I but know that. Yes, they're they're irrelevant. Irrelevant. They do that. Well, they're so, not irrelevant. That's the point. No. London news is full well, of Tory policies. No. Even even it matters what they do down south because it affects the bar. Hmm. Yeah, we know that. I'm going beyond the bar. We know that. The public is hearing we know that. this, no. this right-wing message public out from London. There, Every time they privatise a piece of the NHS down south, that's money coming out of our pockets. 
No, and well, they don't know that. I grant you that. I'm mm -hmm. just going back to your original question, though. I think there is a strategy that says, look, the the Tories are, are, are in in some respects are in relevance to the to the yes campaign, and in fact, if you read what Bell wrote in the Guardian, he made a comment about we shouldn't just be attacking. You can't win this just by attacking the Tories. And in actual fact, I think what you saw today was they've sat down and thought, right, there isn't any point in attacking the Tories because what the Tories say in this respect, apart from maybe a comment about you've got a seven and a half billion hole, which which could hit you know, below the waterline. 5.9. Five, yeah. Whatever. But they're irrelevant. You've got to attack the Labour Party because it's the Labour Party voters you've got to get on yeah. side. So you've got to say the Labour Party are half Tory, as he said in one yeah. instance, the Labour Party are maybe's I, maybe's no. You've got to say the Labour Party are lying, whether you use the word lying or not, every time they say, well, of course, I don't, I don't, I don't like Trident and uh, I, don't, I don't like the bedroom tax and, and, I, and I don't like the privatisation of the, the post office. What are the Labour Party going to do about any of it? You've, because the media, this is the trouble, the, the media should be asking them those questions on TV, but, but they, they, won't, they won't do it. Somebody, do it. somebody yesterday actually had a good. It was the debate. Um, ah, but in Parliament, had, had a pop of them. And well, what are your policies? What are your policies? And what are your? Oh, policies? They, they come up with that with with their personal policies, and then they'll talk. Well, I'll get it with certain spots. They go, yes, but when you're dealing with real politics, I, in other words, I can say and do all this now. But I know it's not going to happen, but I'll, I'll do it anyway. No, but wait, yeah, but just that real let, politics. Let's take a left field example here, Phil. Your man, uh, the wee fellow who's, who's the ex Paulus or whatever, who obviously. Graham Pearson. Graham Pearson. Graham Pearson. Yeah. Right? You know, if he says, in effect, well, it's a bit worrying you're bringing the Paulus in from Edinburgh on a bad day to cover a bloke in Glasgow because that's not local policing. Well, the answer to that is what Simon said. However, it is also, and by the way, Mr. Pearson, Given the financial constraints that we're all under, and your party is not doing too well in proving its yeah. fiscal probity, is it? Um, what is your alternative strategy to maintaining the thousand extra police on the street at the same cost no, I have and to, nail the bastard? Yeah, no, but I have to say, I thought mm. oh, the, my take on that issue was actually, um, I found it rather odd that the question, strangely enough, was from an ex policeman, yeah. uh, was about community involvement. Yeah. In other words, our experience yeah. of being policed yeah. and he was suggesting that this is not good yeah. and Salmon's answer was entirely about the terms and conditions of Scottish police yeah. officers was yeah. much better than yeah. in England. In other words, yeah. he didn't actually face the question that worries me about centralised policing. But this, this centralised yes, policing has been going on for I'm years. Sorry, I'm sorry, it wasn't a question about centralised policing. Yes, it was. It was about no, centralised no, policing. It was a question about why local police Local police. We're getting days off. No, it was a question. I the take issue with that, Nori. It was a question about when local police have got days off, as opposed to trying to get them to work more time at double time, mumble grunt. We'll try and bring a policeman in from Kirk. It'll be cheaper. Cody, because it'll be it'll be it'll be cheaper, and it's not local policing. And his, I still think his answer was. Uh, it's the right economic thing to do, and local policing won't be significantly affected. But I understand your point. You about see my point? It's one police force. Yeah, I, I know. It's something that upsets me about Salmon and his and the whole the SNP government. So they seem to be very authoritarian. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've worked in a disciplined service, and do you know how far the backup called to Edinburgh went? Yeah. London. But you got a big enough fire in London, and a machine, yeah. a fire engine from Edinburgh would go to London. Uh, Effectively, the fire service was a national fire service. Right. And can I ask another thing that, that confused me a little? Right mm -hmm. back when the, the, the nationalising issue was brought up, uh -huh. I think it was um, it was Lewis Macdonald, was it? First yeah. of all, yeah, it was. Yeah. And then Gavin Brown. Yeah. Now Gavin Brown is not a stupid man. I used to interview him regularly when we did the radio. Yeah. yeah. He brought it up as well. And at that point, Alex Sam had made a unequivocal. We would renationalise it, yes. Yeah. And then the chamber just that's where the whole thing. No, you said we bring it back into public, public ownership. ownership. Yeah. All right. And but that he, you at that keep point, that distinction in your head. Okay. But the complete the yeah. chamber just cut, went into utter chaos. The presiding officer lost com complete control. It was absolutely now, what was the what was the big stushy about? Well but the big stushy was about he was asked he's been asked that question before today and he's avoided answering it. He right. did it yesterday. And they must have sat down and said, Look, we've got a shit to go off the pot here. 
Um, he half answered it to the Labour yeah. Party, which is why your Tory stood up and asked him it again. And at that point, he said, "Look, if I not made myself clear, we'll take it back into public ownership." They don't. Nobody. The fear of using the word nationalise, apart yeah. from anything else, and nationalise means 100%, by the way, so taking yeah. Phil's earlier comment... Or it could be 51%. It could be 51%. Yeah. Ah, okay. and, and I actually, personally, I, I happen to, as someone who spent 40 years in private industry, I actually think the way to deal with lots of public ownership is to retain a golden share and yeah. bring in a private element mm. and not give it all to other people's shareholders to do what they like to it. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I see that in the back of his head when he said we bring yeah. in a private And, and, and when you're talking about shareholders, in national, in in one hundred percent nationalised company, you get a group of shareholders who can be a shower of fucking bastards when they've got their grip on the ghoulies, and it's called a union mm. and a close shop who can be every bit as avaricious and doing it and doing an industry every bit as, as a right, bunch yeah. of yeah, sure. uh, one, side, one, one, one side issue before we move, start moving into the, the performances, I noticed that Christian Alain, is that his name? Alain? Yeah, Alain. Yeah, who's French citizen but uh, sits with the SNP, um, he seems to have been given his question at last. You know, oh yeah, he's already had one. No, he's had a question no, that's, that's his area of expertise. Mm. Fishing? But, yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but they've get, fishing yeah, but you've, right? look, it's a smart ploy. He's, yeah, he's since, he, since he took over that seat, he's had at least, I think, two questions. Yeah. And very few people in the chamber get two questions in that period of time. So the fact that they can say, I've got this nice French bloke here, aren't we internationalist? And yeah. he's defending the fishing industry because it's a very good, as he, as he pointed out, look, it was an opportunity for him to quote from that 30 year paper. Yeah. Right. That's, that's why he was yeah. asking the question yeah. and it's his territory. So. But the I think it was- Fishing the, the, industry was expendable. There, there, there was a bit more in that as well, because when you listen to fishermen and who do fishermen blame for their woes? Europe. Yeah, yeah. After salmon, who should fishermen now be blaming for their woes? London. Tory and Labour governments yeah. here, mm. not the Europeans, because the Europeans, same as everybody else, look at these fools, they've let us take their waters over. Yeah, that, and that is another part of the strategy that you've got, you've got to deal with. Because again, Very I, smart. Know, I noticed somebody said last, last night, I think it was in that debate, well, why do you want to not be in a union with England, but you want to be in a union with Europe? In other words, there's a, there's a classic line that says, this is totally contradictory. Uh, you, you want... Basically, you don't want London to tell you what to do. All you're doing is letting these bloody foreigners, Frankfurt. real foreigners, tell you what to do in, in Brussels. There's another line of attack opened up for the yes and more the SNP. Um, idiot boss for, uh, where's he from? The island up north. <laughs> Tavish Scott. Tavish Scott yeah. with his, uh, we want the islanders to run their own affairs. Oh. How do they justify jumping from Westminster to local government. Easy. Without jumping from Westminster easy. to e Holyrood. It's easy. Why is Holyrood bad but local government? Because is because the SNP might get control of Holyrood and they don't and they don't believe But they well, have to make the argument. Well do, the Liberals as we discuss say. often do they have to make the argument when the media no. won't interrogate them. I mean the the Liberals get seriously criticized for having been a home rule party and a federalist party and all the rest of it and never ever do anything. This is an attempt and I've heard it umpteen times now to say we do believe in further devolution and the best way to talk about that is to actually say this central you made the comment yourself a minute ago this centralizing dictatorship in west in holyrood is far far worse than anything that happens from the nice people in westminster and the way to solve that is to give it to the local council well i called it authoritarian and i still believe uh, kenny mcgaskill's approach to uh, policing has been authoritarian but that's by the way can we move on to summing up where we are and we'll start with nori i think on the, Can have, I just, are you ready yeah. for the scores? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because we've had quite a long um, bit of banter here. I've never seen Alex better. Mm. I'm going to give him 9.9. .9. Just in case it gets better. Yeah. Alright. Can I always get better? John Alana, that was lamentable. This, nah, I'm, I'm going to give him one because she didn't wear pink. <laughs> Ruth what? Davidson didn't wear pink. Oh. Ruth <laughs> Davidson, I, she looked like she'd caught my eye, guys. I every one of us sat there thinking, oh dear. And then, Salmon, she accused Salmon of giving a half quote, and lo and behold, she gave a three quarter quote. <laughs> so Salmon asked her to quote the whole lot. Uh, 
he was quite good at, at kind of going, look, I know you're young and, and I know you're, you know, you're still learning your trade. Which is good. So I'm not going to slap you too hard. But there's a wee, a wee scalp. Uh, yeah, ripped her apart. So she gets a one. I'm going to give Willie Rennie five. I was going to say that. What about Willie Rennie? Enough. I feel like we should give him a score. just because. I'm giving Willie Rennie a five because he was great this week. Oh, he was fabulous. He never opened his mouth. <laughs> the presiding officer. Oh, no. Uh, I don't, well, I don't know. She was all right, didn't I have it in my head what happened yesterday. Right. And she got that wrong. I'll, I'll give her a five because today isn't yesterday, basically. Um, but as far as I'm concerned, Alex wiped the floor with him. Phil? Alex, uh, I'll give him 9.5. Um, one, I thought Ruth, Ruth, Ruth was good in that whole way she did it. Kind of, you know, slithery, dodgy, Tory. Um, <laughs> But she did it very well, you know, um, and actually I'm going to give her more than Joanne, I'm going to give, uh, I'll give, I'll give her four and I'll give, Joanne was, yeah, lamentable was the word, I'll give Joanne two, I thought she was terrible. Um, Willie? Oh, I need five. No, no. You're going to give Willie anything? Well, he's not there, was he? Let's well, uh, not talk about Willie. But anyway, but the, the presiding officer, sorry, somebody should have suffered today. I mean, they were totally out of order. It was a really disrupt disruptive third or fourth year secondary school class. It's the desk banging from the very start. It's the jeering, off. the shouting. I mean, it's obvious because I heard it. It seemed to be Neil Lindsay seemed to be the because he sits near the back, doesn't he? And the bad boys always sit at the back. <laughs> um, and I'd heard her say Ken as well. So and he, we all seen him with his smirk at the back. Um, no, I'll give her, I'll give her a five. Um, that's it. I thought she could have done a lot better. Somebody needs to suffer, you know. Somebody needs to suffer. I can agree. Ray and Alex, I'm sure you've got lots to say. Um, I give Alex ten. I, you know, sit, sit, sitting here, you know, with the benefit of hindsight, I'm sure he could have thrown in one or two other things. That, but I wish I could do that. Yeah. Um, I give John I give her two, because um, uh, I, I was a bit pissed off with. Uh, with Alex Bell's article, as Norrie said, I think he redeemed himself by going on a news night and basically stuffing up Brewer's Jaxi, um, because Brewer was hoping he had a real, real meal there to dig it into. Um, I give uh, Ruthie four. Um, I think her line of attack was was a good one because the IFS report that came out this morning was always going to be a good piece of ammunition, uh, but he was fantastic the way he he used her partial quote and then <laughs> stuck it up her nose. Uh, so that was great. Um, presiding officer, I've got, I'm, I think I've got increasing sympathy with the presiding officer because I think it's one of those things where if she actually did do what you and I would like her to do, the media would support anybody she threw out of the chamber or, or penalised in a way that would actually, that would play to this. There is no doubt the unionists are, are, are trying very hard and you heard it today mm -hmm to call Alex Salmon a dictator. It fits their agenda. No, naming, all she's got to do is name people. Not to mention, she called the SNP total, total totalitarian. Yeah, it's, 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 it, it plays to their audience, uh, Nori. There's no uh, no question about that. But that it's, is the kind of criticism that people who are not particularly uh, versed in politics, no. they they hear this, that yeah. Alex Salmon is a one-man band, exactly. horrible fat man, yeah. dictator. Yeah. This is a story that's yeah. been fed. Which, which is why, which is why they need to really push this written constitution hard, uh, yeah. as you know, because you know something I've been working on. Um, you know, because he ne he needs to put that up front. And as you know, I've said on many occasions, the Yes campaign should run an ad with Alex Salmon's face on it, and it should say across the top, "If you don't like this man, vote yes," because they try very very hard. Even though we've got a PR system, we had what Sarwar did in Westminster in the mm -hmm. Section Thirty debate, the whole nine yards. They have an agreed strategy that says. Keep saying the SNP are a bunch of sheep led by Hitler who don't ever argue with them, and if they do argue with them, they leave. Although he dealt with that wonderfully well by, oh, by quoting no. Macintosh, by quoting uh, Mondo mm. Fraser, etc., etc. Et hey, you know, the guy sent in the box last night was a great bloke. Are these two blow? Are these two? I mean, they, they both sat in the back row laughing because they, yeah. they were <laughs> stuffed. So. He needs to work very hard. I mean, I would actually like Alex Salmon to appear on TV and say, look, 
If you don't like me, vote yes. Because you actually get, you will actually get a Scottish government of one hue or another that is worth voting for, and it might not be me. Because this is not about voting for the SNP. He needs to say those things. He started it. Yeah, so I think it's getting that's what because we need to say today. Yeah. yeah, he needs to say more of it. Right, um, so did we get the full, total score? I've still got a score here. Uh, oh, yeah. I did get a score for the providing officer. Uh, five. five. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Alec for ten. Um, I don't. I, I just can't. He just was superb today. Yeah. Uh, and I've been watching him since May the fifth, two thousand and seven. So that's six years, yeah. six and a half well, years. That's quite an accolade. Never been better. Um, and I, the way he dealt with jo jo Joanne, I mean, oh, oh my goodness. What a waste of space this Glasgow wife is. She's not bad at presentation, but simply reading like a teacher, like a yeah. second rate teacher. My mother was a school teacher, my sister was a school teacher, there were school teachers all across my fucking growing up life. That's all all that Joanne Lamont ever is as a, as a, a second rate school teacher. See, Ruth's reading not teacher. a script like that, and if you do, you don't see her reading it. Well, Ruth's a trained she, television yeah. presenter. Yeah, she's smart. She does. Yeah. She, she actually she does look at her notes a lot. Yeah, but, but a lot you would you do. can look at your not, notes without anybody. Yeah. But she's smart John, enough to do it when she's going. Mm. The only the only only points John Lamont gets is because she knows she's got this completely pliant Scottish media who, who will do anything to maintain Labour Party power yeah. one way or another. And she knows this, and that's the audience she yeah. only ever speaks to. So well, we, you, we'll you, get a, we'll get sound bites which which won't. On no, the you, television you, tonight, you it bet. Won't, won't represent anything like what we no, actually no. saw today. No, no, and you bet your boots Cochran will be saying, as he continually says, she is a wonderful debater. Mm. So yeah. I'm going to have two, simply on the basis that, well, as I explained, Ruth, oh, cheering me, Ruth. I mean, I'll give her one for pr pr presentation because she always presents well, but my God, did she get outplayed on that half quote. She obviously had prepared. Presentation's got an awful lot to do with it. But she didn't. She didn't obviously didn't talk it over properly with her advisors. No, she, well, she what's what's you Alex going to say if you say is it a half quote? Oh yeah, I was looking. I, at I, it. I I think she had that in front of her, and she simply decided that she'd try and get away with it. I think she probably read to that much of it and went, "I've got him," and didn't he finish the last bit? Possibly. Didn't you read that it was on the second line? I didn't get that, that far. Either okay. that or whoever's advising her is stupid. She was absolutely floored. Alex just shafted her completely. I don't think she's worse than uh, Sarah Lamont, though. Oh, well. Presiding officer. She got brain. Presiding officer did not have a terribly bad day, although she lost it completely in the middle. Um, I still feel she should get, she should tell him to stop desk banging right in the first question. She needs to name names. So she just needs to go, Neil Lindsay, sit down and behave, or something like that, to make them feel stupid. Name doesn't throw them out, any, but if you name name, because uh, that will come across. Berko, he's like in a different league compared yeah. to her. But you know, the best way to deal with that, I put my earlier point, is you tell your own party, stop doing it. If they do it, they stand out as doing it. Mm -hmm. If they both do it, you all appear to be the same. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I'll, 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 I'll give her five, certainly because, you know, she just... Wasn't too bad, wasn't too good, but I think she should be replaced. Besides an officer's um, second. That's the, that's the scores, that's all the scores. But I think that it was, it was interesting that the, even the rest of the FMQs, the issues of the Royal Mail privatisation, the, the policing, uh, the bedroom tax, I mean, the real issues that are topical this week came up. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. got answers. Well, they did, but at the end of all of that, guys, we only watch the FMQs, and the point is, it's the economy stupid. Mm. And, the, and you know, there's another huge raft of stuff out on this IFS report, on the BBC, and it'll be in the Times, and in the Scotsman, and everywhere else that actually says, there is a black hole if you vote for independence. And they need to do more. Very, very difficult though it is. To, it doesn't matter the fact that he smacked her around in terms of only partially quoting what the IFS report said, but a guy from the IFS came on the radio this morning, you heard him, and said, well, there's a big risk of the oil price. He, did, he didn't want to present it balanced. He didn't say if you use this assumption, although to yeah. be fair to GMS, they did say to him, well, but if you use that assumption, and he said, yeah, well, that would be a lot better, but his agenda was to diss the of course. Alex Salmond. And, you know, so, that's okay. okay. Can I just, uh, right, well, I'll okay. ask to recall on your, 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 yeah. your memories. Now, it's 5.9 billion. Mm -hmm. 
Now, didn't Joanne say 9.5? No, I probably don't know if it's up to 5.9. I, I just don't understand why somebody just didn't round it up to 6 billion. Oh, I thought she said around uh, 9. It's so close. 5.9 billion is a figure that was quoted. 5.9 is what I mean, uh, What we discussed before we went on air about how do we get the message out. I mean, Alex and I disagree. I think the yes are doing it the right way with softly, softly. There are enough people, other people, who support independence who are doing a rougher job. Wings over Scotland is the one that would automatically spring to mind. To me, where the campaign is falling down is that we're not getting it out to the people that watch mainstream media. How do you do it? How much money will it cost? But that's that's what we need. We need yeah. we need to get on the we telly. Don't, we don't disagree. Media. But, but we're and looking for, let's, let, look folks, um, don't forget, if you're pro yes, the march is this Saturday, the weather looks fair, it should be a good day. And, 11 um, o'clock on the high street? Sorry? Is it not 11 o'clock on the high street? Yeah, depends where you are, 10 30, 30, some people, 11, 11 30 for 12. people are meeting much earlier, some groups in and other I, places. I would go further than that, if you're going on the march and you have a pal who can't make his mind up, why don't you bring him or her along and chat to some very ordinary people who are very passionate and have good reason to be passionate. Put your hand in your pocket, take them out for lunch. Okay. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, for a very entertaining review. Uh, before we go. Yeah. Go the scores. Alex, 39.4 out of a possible 40. Joanna Lamont, 7. <coughs> Ruthie beat Joanna Lamont. Um, Ruthie had 10, presiding officer 20, which was kind of average, yeah. I don't think we're all that impressed with it today, and I gave Willie 5 <laughs> for not mentioning two-year-olds or anything else. Yeah, he'll be mentioning them next week. He <laughs> did mention them at the uh, conference. Party, party conference yeah. Yeah. Oh, of course he did. Well, thank you very much, gentlemen, and uh, tune in next week. Thank you.